Hello, I'm Dr. Patricia Pelica, Editor-in-Chief of Journal of the American Society of Echocardiography. I have here with me today Professor Luigi Badano and Dr. Mara Gavazzoni from the University of Milan in Italy. They have published an important work in the November issue of Journal of the American Society of Echocardiography. They're going to tell us about their paper, Clinical Value of a Novel Three-Dimensional Echocardiography-Derived Index of Right Ventricle Pulmonary Artery Coupling in Tricuspid Regurgitation. Certainly, patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation pose challenges in assessment of RV pulmonary artery coupling. Um, and I would like to hear your thoughts about this important work. I might add that this that Professor Badano is a member of the uh, associate editor team of JACE, and therefore this paper was evaluated uh, and managed by Professor Kian Po from Singapore, who served as guest editor. He's a member of our editorial board. Dr. Badano and Dr. Gavazzoni, welcome to JACE. Thank you, Professor Pellica. Tell us about the concept behind your RVPA coupling. Oh, thank you. Uh, we all know that uh, the right ventricular function is a major determinant of uh, prognosis in patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation. The uh, problem and the issue is how to evaluate that in a patient's uh, uh, who have uh, both a volume and a pressure overload on the right ventricle. We know that in those conditions, the conventional uh, um, parameter, echo parameters of right ventricular function can be misleading. Um, in the recent years, uh, it has been proposed uh, to use uh, uh, the concept of uh, right uh, ventricular pulmonary artery coupling to measure the efficiency um, uh, that the right ventricle transfers volume to the right uh, um, to the pulmonary tree uh, in uh, patients with tricuspid regurgitation. However, if we look at uh, the conventional uh, echocardiographic indexes, we have seen uh, that uh, they have uh, uh, used conventional right uh, uh, conventional echocardiographic parameters of right ventricular function like TAPSE or uh, um, the right ventricular free wall strain divided by the pulmonary artery pressure. Those were uh, uh, found to be predictive of the outcome. But however, they have uh, theoretical problems. The first one is that we all know that in patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation, the uh, echocardiographic estimate of pulmonary artery pressure is uh, quite challenging and in, uh, quite inaccurate. And the second point is that using TAPSE or right ventricular free wall or any other of the longitudinal indexes not, doesn't take into account of the amount of blood that uh, during the ejection of the right ventricle goes backward to the atrium and does not uh, go to uh, the pulmonary uh, tree. So with uh, these uh, uh, limitations in mind, Dr. Gavazzoni uh, developed a, a different methods uh, that uh, is uh, promising to overcome the current limitations of echocardiographic assessment of the right ventricular uh, pulmonary artery coupling in severe tricuspid regurgitation. Thank yes, you. the idea the idea was to to start from the so to leave uh, the the mere longitudinal function evaluation of the right ventricle uh, for the right ventricle to pulmonary artery coupling and to shift towards a complete a more global assessment uh, of the uh, coupling in this specific setting of TR. So what uh, did we do? Basically, we used uh, the, the derivative, mathematical derivative of the formula of implicit coupling, uh, that is the ratio between the stroke volume and the end systolic volume that was uh, already validated against uh, implicit uh, measurements by Obert et al. in the past years. And, um, and we corrected, we further corrected this index of uh, coupling for the uh, regurgitant volume of uh, tricuspid regurgitation. 
We included in the study patients with the significant TR, so moderate, at least moderate secondary tricuspid regurgitation. And uh, we corrected the stroke volume, just thus derivating the right ventricle uh, forward stroke volume on end systolic volume as index. Then you related this to patient outcomes. Yeah. First of all, we uh, tested uh, in with the rock analysis the area under the cure. So in a time-independent analysis of this new index of Kautling against the other conventional indexes of TAPSI and PAPS, right ventricle free wall longitudinal strain on PAPS, and uh, right ventricular ejection fraction. And then we derived our cutoff. In our population, a cutoff of 40% to 0.4 was demonstrated to uh, predict to be related to the outcomes with the uh, a sensitivity of 80% and specificity of 80%. And uh, therefore, we elaborated the kaplan meier analysis you see here in the picture. And uh, we saw that uh, this, uh, the, to have a, a right ventricle forward stroke volume on end systolic volume less than 0.4 carried uh, a 5.8 increased risk of mortality and uh, heart failure hospitalization in patients with secondary tricuspid regurgitation and 2.9 increased the risk of uh, death uh, for end cause. And after that, we also sought to evaluate the a possible incremental or added value of this coupling index uh, on top of the more conventional, let's say, uh, indexes of coupling. And uh, we performed also an estimated regression analysis in which you see here a basal model, including some clinical variables and indexes of right ventricle uh, dimension and function, such as right ventricle free wall longitudinal strain. We added that this basal model uh, in uh, two steps. First, uh, the TAPSI and PAPS, uh, and then right ventricle free wall longitudinal strain on PAPS. And after that, we added further our index. And what we found is that uh, really this correction for the regurgitant volume and the fact that we did not use uh, the estimation of the pulmonary artery systolic pressure seems to, to, to help to further stratify the prognosis of these patients uh, since the, uh, the, the power, the predictive power of the models we obtained was significantly increased. Thank you. This will indeed provide a lot of helpful information, this approach for assessing RVPA coupling in patients with significant tricuspid regurgitation. Tell us about the next steps for your work. Oh, thank you. Um, well, uh, the uh, obvious uh, next step is to uh, try to validate uh, these, um, let me call uh, surrogate or index of right ventricular pulmonary coupling that we obtained non-invasively using 3D echo with the invasive uh, uh, right ventricular pulmonary artery coupling using the PV loops. Uh, and uh, we are currently uh, performing uh, this validation. And uh, um, an additional step uh, is uh, to try to better uh, um, or uh, try to measure actually the regurgitant volume that uh, in the study performed by Dr. Gavazzoni was uh, calculated with the PISA uh, method that uh, per se has also some limitations. We have seen that at least in patients with isolated tricuspid regurgitation, uh, we can uh, estimate uh, the regurgitant volume as a difference between uh, the left and the right ventricular stroke volume measured with a three-dimensional echocardiography. And uh, uh, this will be uh, our next step and uh, also uh, in continuing the follow-up of the patients uh, to better understand if uh, these um, predictive value is just to at the relatively short term as in the paper in the paper that we will are going to publish or we will maintain it in the long term outcome as well congratulations on this important work professor badano and dr gavazzoni and thank you for visiting with me today i direct our readers to the november issue of jace have a great day